mercies over all his works. Let us pray. All that the Lord has spoken, we will do and hear. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, just to let you know, at the very beginning, uh, Kent was going to be doing the service today. Kent is feeling quite sick, so keep your thoughts and prayers with Kent. Uh, he went uh, yesterday to get blood work. There was no actual diagnosis, and he'll, he won't have the results of that till at least Monday. So he's resting, but feeling pretty miserable, so our hearts go out to Kent. And... Uh, so I'm going to be continuing the series I've been doing at uh, this service, the informal service, about having been in Egypt, moving through the wilderness. There's so many stories, I'm actually doing highlights because you could spend five years doing this story of the children of Israel in the wilderness. But we have, what we, <laughs> or, yeah, <laughs> or 40 years. <laughs> Let's try not to do that. But um, we've, so we have gone over slavery in Egypt, be in bondage in Egypt, the children of Israel. What, what was that about, that state that we need to recognize? This whole story is about your and my spiritual development. This is the Lord building us into a regenerate person, a, an angel. And, you know, so it is a regenerative series, as many stories and series are in the Lord's word. But it's a beautiful sweeping story. So it starts out with recognizing where we are, knowing you're in bondage. Moses gets out of there. It is in Midian. And he's there for 40 years. <laughs> and he comes, it says he's there for 40 years. It says he was 40 when he let, went there. So at 80 years old, burning bush story. The, the Lord is in this bush. The bush is not consumed by the fire, but, the, but it's burning. And, and this is an image of Jehovah God, Yehovah God, speaking to him from a bush, burning. And took his sandals off his feet, holy ground, and he's saying, you're going to go and get my people out of Egypt. And he, an amazing assignment. He, four times he tries to defer the assignment and all kinds of meaning in, in that. But... He says, who, who shall I say is sending me? I am who I am. I am the one who is. And then he says, Jehovah, Yehovah, the God of your fathers. He also says that, is, has sent you. Then we talked about the crossing of the sea and the Egyptian army behind, a sea ahead. And Moses says to the people, be still. And know the glory of the Lord. And they, be still. And, and then the next thing said is, and Yehovah, Jehovah says to Moses, why are you standing? Go forward. And so there's something there about we need to recognize, honor and know the glory of the Lord, who the Lord is, and move forward. And these are almost one concept. They're together. And they're right next to each other in this story. There is no way to move, so be still. Well, we already are, <laughs> but you know, in this state of fear of, of an attacking enemy and not knowing where to go or get away from it, but knowing we need to get away from it, evil and falsity in our lives, we're kind of paralyzed, and this statement of being still is not about paralysis. It's settle your mind, be at peace, be that kind of still, have stillness, different different than their seeming actual feelings in the image of the story. 
and now move forward. And then he says, Moses, stretch out your hand and the rod in your hand. And they moved forward, celebrated on the other side with Miriam leading in with timbrel and dance and singing. Then we talked about water because shortly after that, they're in the wilderness, not long at all, and they're complaining to Moses about not having water. So all the stories about, there are two stories about water. Bitter waters made sweet and water from a rock that Moses was commanded to do for about a million people or more. <laughs> 600,000 fighting men were told. How many Hebrews were there in the wilderness being given water? And then the next one, manna. We talked about bread from heaven, manna. Then we talked about the Amalekites. And in that story, here they, and now there's an enemy. And, and now, all of a sudden, there's Joshua, a commander. And this is, he represents fighting truth. So all of the story up to there, they're fleeing, recognizing and fleeing. That's us understanding what, you know, there's a God he's telling me there's something to get away from. And so they obey, obey, obey. Okay, I'll get away from it. I'm going to try to get away from it. And at a certain point, we fight as if of ourselves. Moses is on the, on the hill, his hands raised. That is in the story. This is in our minds, back of our minds, when we're fighting against evils and falsities. But now it's, we're fighting, but the Lord's fighting. And at th that dual image is in that story of fighting the Amalekites and the scary Ama nature of the Amalekites. And so that's the first time we actually are fighting because we know it's, it, this needs to be a willingness to fight against our own evils and falsities. And then, Last time, at Sinai, the Ten Commandments, I had an image of the commandments here, and all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and hear. We will obey. Hearing is obeying. We talked about that. And so now I want to get to a point and talk a bit about freedom and the will being the house for the Lord It's very interesting. The Ten Commandments. They're given in chapter 20 of the book of Exodus. Reading through it and reading through it all these years, it says, it, you know, they're scared. There's thunder and lightning. And the Lord says to Moses, get down and warn the people lest they break through to gaze at Jehovah and lest they perish and so on. Consecrate everyone and but make a barrier and all these things. He says, get away, get down, and then come up, and you and Aaron with you, but do not let the people break through and come up. And so Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. And then it says, and God spoke all these words saying, it doesn't say, and Moses came down with the commandments yet. I have a thought that the commandments were given to Moses verbally by God. At right after the Ten Commandments are listed, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of a trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. It's like Moses was on this mountain and they were hearing thunder seeing lightning and smoke going up and the sound of a trumpet then he comes out and they say you you speak with us we don't want god to speak to us that closely or directly they're afraid moses said do not fear for god has come to test you that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin holy fear <clears throat> so they stood afar off and Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from heaven, talked with you. You shall not make anything to be with me, gods of silver, gods of gold. You shall not make for yourselves. An altar of earth you shall make for me. You shall sacrifice on it 
your burnt offerings. In every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone. For if you use your tool on it, you have profaned it. Here's our unhewn altar made by Nancy. Nor shall you go up by steps to my altar. And then he lists a bunch of judgments and statutes. And if a man steals an ox and all these things that he's listing, if you know, shall not circulate a false report and tells Moses to write these things down as a testimony. So these are written, I think, first by Moses. And then chapter 24, the oral, I believe, commandments were given in chapter 20. Now he said to Moses, come up to Jehovah, you and Aaron, Nahab and Abihu, Aaron's sons, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And Moses alone shall come near Jehovah, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people go up with him. And so Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, again, I said it before for the last time, all the words which the Lord has said we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning, built an altar at the foot of the mountain, put up the 12 pillars according to the tribes of Israel, and sent young, young men to sacrifice before the Lord. And so Moses went up, and Aram, Aaron and Ahab and Abihu and 70 elders of Israel, and they saw, and 70 elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in its clarity. Moses, Aaron, Nahab, Abihu, and 70 elders got to see that. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. And then so he went up, <clears throat> and a cloud covered the mountain, and he was up there, and on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud, the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountains, in, in the mountain, in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, went up to the mountain, and was there forty days and forty nights. And that, the, the next thing that happens, he, he starts speaking to him, tell them to bring me an offering. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And then he goes into detail about that. Moreover, you shall make a tabernacle. You shall make the, everything. This is where he tells him everything you're going to make. <clears throat> and then Moses came down from the mountain with the tablets. All of that. And now he says, come up to me, and I'll give you tablets, which he has carved out, which he has written on, the Lord. Came down from the mountain, and what were they doing? Worshiping a golden calf. Pled with, with uh, Aaron, make us a God. Moses has gone too long. And so he did. <laughs> Out of, he said, take the earrings, all your gold earrings. He made a golden calf, and they worshipped it. Moses came down and saw this, smashed the Ten Commandments that were carved out of rock and written on by the finger of God, and he shattered them. And then it says, Moses took his tent, pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. This is the, the, the tabernacle before the tabernacle. Moses' tent, he moved outside the camp because they had sinned, but he set his, his tent up, called it the tabernacle of meeting, and that's where the Lord would meet him. It came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. It's not calling it Moses' tent anymore. This is the first tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, 
And all the people rose and worshiped each man in his tent door. And so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, Moses, but his servant Joshua did not depart from the tabernacle. And then the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write on these tablets all the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. This is the this became the Ten Commandments that we know about in history that existed in this world. The first ones broken. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. So he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moses rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai as the Lord has commanded, had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. <clears throat> this is Moses fashioned these tablets. He was told to not didn't write on them. And it clearly seems to me they weren't from where the Lord cut the, the stones. They're from down at the base of the mountain. And he took them up this whole thing about the, 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 the reforming, the rewriting of the commandments by the Lord on blank stones Moses carved out and took up to him, this is a picture of you and me. This is our as of self. This is our making a place where the Lord can write on our hearts, write his commandments on our hearts. This is a a, a new covenant that we, the, the Lord is making from, from the first one, which couldn't be obeyed. It, it, it can't just be from the Lord down. It has to be, all right, I, I am willing, right on my heart. And then the Lord writes on our heart. And that's a whole image of our willingness to have the Lord in our heart, the as of self, which is a negative thing and a very, very positive thing. And now we come to uh, part of the story, and I apologize in one in a sense because I've, I don't I don't because it's a story from the Lord's Word. But we I have talked about this part of the story before, just by itself, without a build up like that to it. I love this part of the story. It's about human freedom and our willingness to follow the Lord, and so I have talked about it before, and it's just. A turning point in the lives of the children of Israel. It's a real turning point, and this represents something in our movement toward becoming an angel. Up till now, as I've said before, up till now it was fleeing, then it was fighting, but it was then obeying the Lord. Everything you say we will do, and the commandments given, and consecrating themselves. And then after they were given again, and that tabernacle that was created that Moses would talk to the Lord in, before the instructions to build the tabernacle, which we know is, uh, you know, which was built by them, built by, the, remember, in Egypt, the children of Israel, the Hebrews in Egypt, were made to make bricks and made to build cities. They had to build things. They were compelled to build things. And they have been given instructions Moses has told them the instructions about built, making all the things, the tabernacle, the ark, the priestly garments, the breastplate for Aaron, the, the laver, you know, the altar of incense. Everything is, is going to be made. Now, are they going to be made to do something again? <clears throat> and Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. That is such a key phrase. Whoever is of a willing heart. Now they're being asked. They're not being told. If you're willing, bring to the Lord. Bring what? 
Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, goat's hair, skins dyed red, skins and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, onyx stones, stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplate, a list. All who are gifted artisans among you, come and make all that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle, its tent, coverings, clasps, boards, the ark, its poles, table of showbread, lampstands, all the things listed, listed, list down to the pegs. And then the garments of ministry in the holy place for Aaron, the priest, and his sons to minister. And all of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. So he's saying, whoever's of a willing heart, bring all these things, not just gold and silver, linens, all these things. And they left from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred. Doesn't say everyone came. Everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting for all its service and for the holy garments. They came, both men and women, as many as had a willing heart. That's a third time. It's emphasizing willingness. Wow, that's low enough to see it below the clouds. <laughs> a plane going over. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that's the third time. They came, as many as had a willing heart, and brought earrings, nose rings, necklaces, jewelry, gold. And everyone made an offering to the Lord. Everyone with whom was found blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen, goat's hair, Everyone who offered an offering of silver or bronze brought the Lord's offering. And everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. All the women who were gifted artisans spun yarn with their hands and brought what they had spun of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred with wisdom, another stirring of the heart mentioned, spun yarn. The rulers brought onyx stones and the stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplate, spices, light, and anointing oil for sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing to bring material of all kinds of work, which the Lord, by the hand of Moses, commanded to be done. Then it talks about certain artisans, Bezalel, um, uh, and another coming, where's his name? And they came and used their craftsmanship, and the Lord put in his heart the ability to teach in him and a holy ab. And they filled them with skill. And Be Be Bezalel and a holy ab, and every gifted artisan in whom the Lord had put wisdom and an understanding, another putting in. Then Moses called Bezalel and a holy ab, and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred, we're about eight now, to come and do the work. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. So Moses gave a commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. Too much. Then it talks about the furnishings and everything. They started to do what was commanded from these materials. Thus Moses did according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. And so Moses finished the work. And then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The reason I love this story is that 
as I was saying, this is the moment in the story of the escape from Egypt and traveling through the wilderness right here at Sinai after the giving of the commandments and saying all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and hear. But here, let those who's willing, who have a willing heart bring. And they brought. And it kept saying, those of a willing heart, those in whose hearts were stirred, that is said over and over. It's just so emphasized. This is a free will act. <clears throat> this is a, a part of our regenerative life where we choose from our free will, our as of self, from ourselves, to bring from a willing heart. We're establishing a home for the Lord in our heart. I want to read this, a little bit of this from True Christian Religion 533. <clears throat> the intentions of the will must be examined because in the will, love resides. For the will is its receptacle, receptacle of love. From the will, every love breathes out its delights into the perceptions and thoughts of the understanding. For these, the thoughts, perceptions, and thoughts of the understanding, act from the will and not at all from themselves, because they wait on the will and consent to and confirm all that pertains to its love. Everything's about what's in the heart. And the perceptions and understanding of the understanding, uh, the perceptions and thoughts of the understanding, wait and then act. And it, it says, it goes on to say things about if the, if the thoughts and the understanding want to do something else, you know, th that is something without a good will, or the will can act on its own a a a in a negative way too. But this is talking about an ordered way. The will, therefore, is the very house in which the person dwells. And the understanding is the hall through which the person goes out and in. I just love that image that the will is the house in which a person dwells. <clears throat> it's also where the Lord dwells. And I have a passage that talked about that later. But now I just want to mention this passage. 1947 and 1937 in Arcana Celestia are about self compulsion. And this is part of 1947. In self compulsion, there is freedom. That is, what is willing and spontaneous. And this distinguishes self-compulsion from being compelled. Egypt, compelled. Sinai, from a willing heart, not compelled. Self-compelled. Going to do it. Going to build the tabernacle. Because I said so. As of self. <clears throat> Without this freedom or willingness and spontaneity, a person cannot possibly be reformed and receive any heavenly proprium, heavenly self or own. And though the contrary seems to be the case, there is more freedom in times of temptation than there is outside of them. Indeed, at such times, freedom increases as insults or assaults are made against evils and falsities. And it is consolidated by the Lord in order that a heavenly proprium may be given to the person. For that reason also, the Lord is closer in times of temptation. And then it says this, the Lord in no way compels anybody. Arcana 1947, the Lord in no way compels anybody. No one who is compelled to think that which is true and to do that which is good is reformed, but instead thinks all the more what is false and wills all the more what is evil. This is so with all compulsion, as may become clear from the experience and lessons of life, which when learned prove two things. First, that human conscience, consciences will not allow themselves to be coerced. And second, that we strive for the forbidden. <laughs> Those two things. Furthermore, everyone who is not free desires to become so. When a person is being regenerated, he compels himself from freedom that the Lord imparts to him and humbles, indeed afflicts his rational, 
so that it may submit itself, and in consequence, he receives a heavenly proprium. This proprium is gradually perfected by the Lord, and it becomes more and more free. In the affection and delight for good and truth, there is happiness such as the angels experience. <clears throat> and so, this is all to illustrate the blank tablets written on by God, the as of self, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and hear, we started with last time. And now, everyone who has a willing heart, let them bring, and they brought too much. Indeed, too much. And I just love the story about willingness. The, this is the beginning of Israel as a theocracy, a, a, a governed by God people. And this is in you and me, this is the same thing. A willingness to be led by the Lord, which is the definition of innocence, which we're given in the Third Testament. Arcana Celestia, 1947. This heavenly proprium is then gradually perfected by the Lord, and it becomes more and more free, so that as a result, it becomes the affection for good and for truth, deriving from that good, and possesses delight. And in that affection and delight, there is happiness, such as the angels experience. This freedom is what the Lord himself is referring to in John. The truth makes you free. If the Son makes you free, you are truly free. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.